Hello, welcome to Fatito's Gang. I'm Nenna Jemie. They say the future leaders of a nation are the next generation, that is, the youth. But there's always concern about whether the next generation is even ready to lead and when the time is best to pass the torch. Well, today the gang discusses this. Let's take a look. <music> We're back and we're talking leadership transition, we're talking the generation next. One of the things that you, you know, that stereotypes are such awful things and in this country we are quick to stereotype. Um, and you know the thing about stereotypes, when you live with them long enough, uh, sociologists call it the reification of myths. A myth takes on concrete form in your head and you begin to take this myth as reality. One of the terrible myths is, oh, the next generation, ah, the people are not that, these are not that, oh, oh in our time. I, I tell people, look, this is the classic story. Everybody, his old school began to go down the day he graduated. <laughs> so it's always in our time. I don't buy that nonsense about in our time. But really, some particular things that have happened in years past, so to speak, um, make the generation next even better prepared because they have better exposure to technology that brings the world to their lap. I recognize that there are challenges because there's been a collapse of culture in Nigeria yeah. and my generation is responsible for that. Mm -hmm. This collapse of culture has affected the values of many in the generation next. But I see every day as I interact outstanding young people who are just leadership material. Mm. Yet all you hear is, ah, I can start with you. I had the privilege and the good fortune of sitting with you and a group of people that you were working with several years ago mm -hmm. on, the, you know, uh, uh, on making life better for some really very, very poor people who were malnourished and all of that. And maybe you'll speak to it in the course of our conversation. Um, I have sat with somebody who was through one of our programs, became a Yali fellow too, uh, and volunteered his time to go into Liberia in the heat of the Ebola. epidemic Ebola. Now, that for me is leadership. Um, why do you think there's this general view that the generation next is not ready for prime time. Yeah. Um, just, uh, we're actually talking about it, and someone mentioned that, um, I, I don't know if it would be okay to say again that it's um, with your generation, because where they had the opportunity to start early and to begin to engage leadership, because this thing is about training, and of course it's about the belief and the culture of the people, and they began to engage this pretty early, but today, we have those same people there. It annoys me as a 30-something-year-old, first of all, to be referred to as Generation Next, because I think I'm Generation Now. And I wonder, when I see the leaders who are in power, for example, our current sitting president, who in, at, at about my, some time in my age, was able to lead the, 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 this whole country. And so I wonder where that shift happened, mm -hmm. that we began to think that um, we are no longer at 20 something, someone can just rely on the parents and keep relying on the parents. So it's a whole, it's a cultural thing. And I think that we would have to attack it from there. I, for example, have come to the conclusion a long time ago and I've taken ownership of it that I can be the solution that I seek wherever I find myself. And that's what I live and that's the philosophy I live. So I think the question should be, how are we going to scale this kind of thinking up amongst um, you know, more young people and make it into a cultural thing? That can I, I, drive progress. Mm. So I, I think that I think that when it comes to scaling it up, I think we need to be conscious about it. And conscious about it means that we need to start now to train young people on the new idea of what leadership is. Because I, I continue to see young people think about leadership in terms of positional authority. Mm -hmm. And that's not what leadership is. Mm -hmm. So for example, I, I, I was having a conversation with a colleague recently and I said, there is no leadership program in any of our universities. So there's no BS in leadership. 
Mm. In, outside the country, there's even a PhD program in leadership. Mm. Now, while leadership is not something that is theoretical, it's important that people start to know the basics about leadership and yeah. the fact that as a person, you can lead anytime, anywhere, any situation, mm. and you don't need to be in a position of authority to lead. So if we start to incorporate these things in our schools, for example, we take a course on leadership, it begins to open your mind to the potential you have as a young person mm. to lead, and that you don't have to be 50 before you can lead. You don't even have to be local government chairman or a before senator you before you can lead. No, exactly. you don't need to have a position. One of the things yeah, that we certainly. preach at the CVL is the idea of a leader without title, title. True. you know yeah. uh, a, a 360 degree leader who actually runs from behind regardless of who is at the top you know i, I was when i was in appalachian state university it's mandatory for every student to have a minor or do a short course in leadership yeah, the and they have a, a community and a school together program that they run that allows each of their students to own or participate in a community project. So these are these are things that are lacking in our schools right here yeah. in Nigeria. Actually, a lot of young people don't know that if you are applying to some of the best schools in the world, what you have done to show leadership pre-university mm -hmm. yeah. is a critical yeah. Yeah. factor, factor yeah. in your being accepted. Mm -hmm. and, and so young people need to take charge, take responsibility and make a difference in their community. I, I tell people, you know, this whole culture thing, I, I was given a talk at the University of Nigeria a couple of years ago, somebody ran up to me and very proudly says, oh, you know, there's a book on SUG, Student Union Government at the University of Nigeria. You know that the, the book suggests that nobody has performed as, at your level since, since you, you know. left. And, and that's I, something so to he, happy about. I, I said to him, yes. that cannot be, I mean, if it is the truth, then the yes. person is writing the book, doesn't mm. know what he's talking about, mm. or something has gone wrong. Because the very next year should be better than the year exactly. before, and, and so on and so forth. Why do we say that parents' desire for their children will be better than, than them? them. Mm. Uh, but I think something really did go wrong in the course of our country's history that made people begin to take less responsibility. I mean, one of the things that led to that mindset was as an undergraduate at the University of Nigeria, I insisted that you know, foreign policy should not, which was the most important issue for Nigeria then, mm -hmm. should not take place without we, the students, being involved. Mm -hmm. and, and extended an invitation to the foreign minister. They were not going to reply to me. I went there and somehow managed to talk him into understanding that, you know, we were a, an important stakeholder. Of course. Those kinds of, in those days, once something went wrong in the country, within our students were on the streets. Yes demonstrating against it. But somehow, we have managed to pollute the environment of public conversation in universities. Uh, politicians have become active through some agents who should not still be undergraduates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, these people who call themselves <laughs> student union leaders today, they're in their 10th year on that campus and so mm -hmm. Exactly. So those are some of the things that have created these uh, unfortunate perceptions that young people and uh, not as aspirational in terms of the mm. things that you look to, but something must be done for people like you who have been identified and have been in, in ways celebrated for the effort that you've made to mentor yeah. another young generation exactly. to know that, look, you can be whatever you want to be, whoever you want to be at age 18. Yeah, actually, the, the such work is actually already going on. In Ibadan, I run a project called Before I Turn 18, basically preparing teenagers for life, leadership, and career before they get to that age. And that was given birth to a heart of like four years of researching and actually understanding how, how these things work. The, but like what you're saying, the mindset to rise up and and, and cause a change or tackle issues does not come on you when you get to 100 level. It comes before then. So, so some lead, leaders are not born, but they are made from the environment and the things they've been exposed to. Mm -hmm. Someone said you cannot work with giants and remain a dwarf. Mm -hmm. So if we expose very young children to leaders, to mentorship, to exposure. I, I've, I've worked with close to 6,000 of them. and. I can tell you that if you tell them at age 12 that you can be the next Professor Utomi, this is how Professor Utomi got there. They are, it's mo it motivates them for even daily learning. So it means that what 
we are getting wrong in, in um, our educational system, like Kachi said, is our education is too curricular. Like, like um, according what, 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 if you don't mind, I, I'm a little out of touch. Now, what happened to Boy Scouts, girls, guys? Because we're mm, leadership exactly. training at age yes. seven, yes. Yes. So we don't yeah, those, those things just, have yeah. been devaluated, yeah, yeah they've been devaluated because, because everybody yeah. wants to get A1, and we, we the education system is being graded by the distinctions that even people pay for exactly and and, and we, we have now put a, a premium it's just quick quick results now now so parents and i wanted to actually add to what you were saying and uh, you know what you're doing now is an intervention yeah. because of a failure mm -hmm. at the family level and just like you're saying the boy scout those structures that used to be in place but i think we as a people will need to start a movement again for example it does worry me that many times the first time a, an average nigerian ever gets to work in a corporate environment is after yeah, university, university. Yeah. Yes. at 20 something mm -hmm. for yeah. most of them it's so, wrong let me chip this in i was reading from the world um what economic forum they released the report on the future of jobs mm -hmm. and they listed that by 2020 the things that will the desired skills that will be required, that will be required really in yes. the workplace things that yes. computers will not replace mm. yeah. are things like cognitive um, yeah. cognitive flexibility mm. emotional yeah. intelligence yeah. emotional yeah. intelligence and, and um, they're not being taught in school yeah. they, 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 they are can no but some can to yeah. an extent some can. Sometimes so, emotional, so, emotional intelligence can be taught in school but our schools are not to engage people need to engage like boy scouts is a place where you learn perseverance yeah. you learn and real life you skills learn what you need yeah. to life survive skills, real interpersonal life skills. relationships and, and all of that exactly but, but easy, since those things are not being taught mm -hmm. in, in schools and it's it's going to set a gap over time between the world and nigeria uh, or africa because the world is way ahead of us and that gap keeps but, but increasing really, truly the boy scout movement is gone well, it, it, there was it, no it, boy I think scouts. I still see world. them around, yes, but it's not I, thriving I, I as it used yes, to be. Exactly. Really. I didn't even like, see no yes, boy yes, scouts. It's not, not thriving yeah. as it used to it was be. Not, I mean, it, yeah. You were not a real boy when I was seven years old. Exactly. You were not a boy scout. It, and that's the kind it, of moment we need. The again. values placed on those things is actually the problem. Because now we are about money. I, I was saying earlier is it, that is it I about remember, money yes. or lack of understanding. No, no. What happened? We had the same parent. Maybe Prof might be able to answer that better for us. What happened? I was saying that I remembered when a man whose wealth could not be, be they, you know, explained then mm. was ostracized by society. Yes, they didn't care what. Mm. So what happened? Because then they placed a premium on the things that were being learned by the Boy Scouts, and they, they, was, they, they thought it was important. Like but now people don't think it's important anymore. It's just the co uh, the connections your parents need to have and need to place you in the kind of schools that put you with the right people to mm. get the kind of jobs they think that you need to survive in life. So those things have been de-emphasized because if it's if we see it as useful and important then you'll see that more people so i think we need to begin to engage that mindset and bring about a movement that and, and, and parents that. parents need to also come to an understanding of the current trends in parenting yeah yeah well really it's very important uh, to return to the family the fact that the family is not as effective in as many it, ways yeah. as it used to be it's affecting our society is the very building block of society and I, I hope that all of us can take a cue from this and ensure that the domestic school, the most important school, begins to get it right. And then it will go on to the school that is out there and we'll take it from there. The gang agrees that leadership skills need to be instilled in our next generation well before it's time for them to actually take the lead. Also, leadership should be taught outside of the classroom. So it's important to include extracurricular activities in our education system. What do you think? Let's hear from you. When the government is saying that way, it will be reduced the number of people that are just striving to get there. Of course, we youths, we are the next generation. This sense of 70 plus leaders in this in this 21st century no it's not it's actually boring they have no digital sense they have no computer sense they have no sense of our new age we can't just be repeating leaders we have to let the youth the young ones enter into office and of course the government should allow students they should train students in 
government offices in things that in things that require to be in government offices not just sitting down in class and be writing we need to also be know what they are doing there and other things we the youths we need to be engaged you know the government need to engage us you know create platform on which we can you know move on to you know bring out our ideas you know if you have an idea now maybe you want to in, uh, in, invest invest in something or you even want to you want to like create a new thing like innovation where's the power you know to work on that is why you see people are being discouraged you see youths you know millions of them traveling outside the country going through the sahara desert going to the mediterranean sea you know in, in, in looking for greener pasture you know the government need to really calm down and think of what they could do you know it's not about getting what they want but giving what they have already you know taken from the people Gearing up for the 15th CDL Annual Lecture and International Leadership Symposium. We need to reorganize our educational system. The educational system must reflect the new realities of the 21st century. Our young people are much, much better than we give them credit for. And they want to change their country and they are committed. The new tribe of Nigerians is necessary. It is that new tribe of Nigerians that I think we all should belong. That tribe that doesn't know the north or south or the west or doesn't even know religion. Just the Nigerian, the great Nigerian. Join the Center for Values and Leadership on February 6, 2018 as we discuss the team, leadership and performance in Africa, the challenge of the continent's economic competitiveness. For sponsorship and advert placement, contact Modestus plus 234 8034746919 mwolu at cvl.com.ng James plus 2348146286645 jabube at cvl.com.ng To register, log on to www.cvl.com.ng primary areas that we could focus on in volunteering. Of course, there are so many areas, and any area is, is important, is valuable. The most important sectors in making society work well are the so-called so social sectors. Education, healthcare. Yeah. Um, there is so much on the performance on Nigeria's side in both sectors. Yeah. How can we use volunteerism to raise the quality of both healthcare and education, without which we will not be competitive as an economy. So, yeah. for, for example, my organization, PSN Africa, is a mental health organization, So, which is one area that has been neglected even all over the world, but Nigeria is a really sad case. Mm. But my, my own focus is also maternal and mental health. One in five women will suffer a mental illness when they have a baby, and nobody's having conversations about this. So what we're, what we're doing in my own organization is raising awareness about this condition, you know, bringing volunteers on board who we will train and send into the field to these hospitals to educate these women, to screen these women. So if we have more and more people coming into that space, public health is huge, you know, raising awareness, because once you don't know even what is wrong with you, there's no way you seek help. And which, uh, raising awareness allows us to also improve access to mental health care in, in a way that allows people not be stigmatized, because mm. mental health is hugely stigmatized here in the country. Mm. Uh, big, big problem. Yeah, it's a, it's a huge health. problem. And there's no uh, health uh, without mental health. You don't mm -hmm. have leaders um, yeah. ruling the country if they're not mentally yeah. stable. I can tell you something that happened to me it was an uh, incredible shock. Journey of discovery for me, and I've talked to professional groups about this. Um, I was teaching uh, an executive MBA class, and some lady in the class was wearing fancy shades, and I made a joke about it. And then she came after and said to me, "Look, I wasn't dr dressing up for class. Pulled the glass. She had a black eye." Mm. The conversation led me to discovering how many middle-class women because of challenges in their marital relationship yeah. are in serious mental, mental health 
problems. When you check the new psychiatric hospitals and you see half the women there are in that, really in that condition because of the breakdown in relationship with their spouses. And I think this is down to a family system again. So I, so I want to use this opportunity to say something I, I see everywhere. That families and parents spend many hours and of their life trying to raise the right woman you know their daughters being the right wives yeah. that they fail to raise the right sons so yes. I, I i feel ashamed that the quality of men our society is producing mm -hmm. men who hit women i was grown i was raised never to hit a woman so I, I never saw my father hit a woman mm -hmm. and so I, there's no way I, I would see myself hitting a woman but you see people proud about the fact that they're hitting women and it all starts from from the from the background if you hit your wife your son is going to grow up to hit his own wife mm -hmm. you know and the circle of abuse continues and not enough is being done in that space so i think that and that's these are the kind of men who then become leaders you know and these are the kind yeah. of women who then become leaders women who are afraid to air their own opinions mm -hmm. who are not yeah. assertive mm -hmm. so you see so there's there's, there's, a, there's a lacuna there's a gap that needs to be filled in terms of parenting mm -hmm. which is the first stage in terms of raising awareness of what is required in terms of volunteering mm -hmm. like, like prof said so family a culture of volunteering needs to be encouraged mm -hmm. and then you see our, our, our community producing leaders that we can be proud of you know? In, in, you know in my organization Sozo, we did a little research and some focus group discussion and we realized that one out of 20 children growing up in Ibadan that attended a public school only one out of 20 makes it to a tertiary institution, be it polytechnic or university, mm. wow. every year. Wow. Now, we went ahead, so we selected all the focus group parents and all, we, the, the, um, we went further into it. We realized that these things are due to four major factors. Poverty, everybody shouts poverty. Lack ignorance from the parents' yeah. side. And from that gives back to a lack of purpose and a mindset of direction from the children and that is due to the fourth thing lack of guidance or a role model or a mentor mm. so so our intervention was basically to create mentorship so be beyond teaching the parent beyond we created a, a, a gap such that we are able to appear to these children as their fathers and as their mother and expose them to see the real world and that has actually like almost after statistics at the moment mm. So we are, and later on we now included training the parents to be able to create an environment Very in their important. homes for yes. educational yes. and leadership yeah. excellence. Yeah. We had to do these things in Yoruba because the parents are really ignorant. Mm -hmm. So you cannot give what you don't have. So that is where, where the thing is. The, the model, I grew up in, in a J community where my mentors were bus conductors and, um, and people that sell pepper and all those things. You there's nothing wrong with selling pepper. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing wrong, but it's mm. just it's just the fact that you I reproduce what exactly. you see yeah. every it, day it, it, it as a child. It, it really leads me to another concern that I have. Certainly, I went to school then in Baden myself. At the time that I went to school in the Villa College back in the 60s, it was a center of excellence. I mean, I mm. three classes before mine. Uh, just about everybody, but three yeah, in class went to medical and school. Moments. Yeah, wow. and 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 um, in those days, in a class you would find the son of a professor, you would find the son of a minister, you would find <laughs> in a public school, <laughs> you would find the <laughs> son of the the wow. right the, 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 the 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 washerman mm -hmm. in the school's laundrette, mm -hmm. and everybody. You know, you, you learn one yeah, from the other. Yeah. 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 That is not happening in our society today. No. It's not. That's it's one not of the there is big dangers facing our society. Yeah. Because yeah. we're growing two different societies. Yeah. Yes. These are all concerns. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have much time as we should. The community is growing inferiority complex. Yeah. yeah. But right. unfortunately, we have to go oh on the <laughs> issues, issues, issues. Hey, I think we should all kind of focus on what we can do to deal with these issues. Yeah. Otherwise, Tomorrow will be difficult for both you and myself. In closing, leadership is not about authority, but rather it's about giving one's services for the greater good. Well, that's all that we have time for today on Patito's Gang. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope that you found today's episode to be informative and enlightening. Be sure to join us on all our social media pages displayed right there on your screen. I am Nenna Jemie, and until next time, take care and be well. <laughs> <laughs>